Okay, I just about forgot my favorite problem about exponential growth. And the reason I like it is because it illustrates the difference between linear growth and exponential growth. So here's the problem. Suppose you had a couple great, 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 great grandfathers, call them Al and Bob, A and B, who 200 years ago, they each put $10 in a bank for you, and the interest rate is 6% per year, okay? That's not what you get nor, uh, these days, but it, you, for years and years and years, if you had your money in the bank, the interest rate was about five and a quarter, or five and three quarters, two, pretty close to 6%. Okay, now you'd probably have to put your money in the stock market or bonds at least to get that sort of interest rate. But let's just, for sake of simplicity, let's just assume it's in the bank. So 200 years ago, they both start out with, with $10, but they have two different strategies, okay? <coughs> Great-grandfather Al, he um, was a little bit uh, cautious, so every year he would come and he'd get the interest and take the interest out of the bank and leave the principal $10 in the bank. So let's think about it. You have $10 and you have 0 .06 uh, as your interest rate, so every year you would earn 60 cents, okay? So every year he, he left instructions for the bank to take that 60 cents out and to just put it in a container, put it in a jar, put it under the mattress, put it in a, in a cookie jar, whatever. And so you save that up and you still have your $10 and you save it up as it goes. Bob, he just said, no, just let that accumulate and it'll just kind of keep increasing the next year you'll have a little more in the bank and so you'll have a little more to gain interest and so on. So let's see once what happens to these two strategies. At the end of one year, uh, at the end of one year, what's going to happen to L? He's going to have the ten dollars plus he's going to have the point the sixty cents and so he's going to be at ten dollars and sixty cents at the end of the first year. Agreed? At the end of the second year he's going to have the original ten dollars and now he's going to have the sixty cents from the first year plus sixty cents times the second year so he's going to have two times sixty and so that's going to be eleven twenty at the end of the third year it's going to be ten plus three times point six which is going to be eleven eighty at the end of the fourth year, it's going to be 10 plus 4 times 0. 0.6, which is going to be what? 1240. At the end of the fifth year, it's going to be 10 plus 5 times 0. 0.6, which is $3. So it's going to be $13 even. And let's go all the way down. At the end of 200 years, it's going to be $10 plus 200 times 0. 0.6. And 200 times 0.6 is 120, plus 10 is going to be $130, okay? And zero cents. So, uh, so 200 years ago, collecting 60 cents a year, uh, that's grown up to 130 bucks. That's kind of nice. I'd like to have 130 bucks if someone gave it to me. Okay, let's see once what happens. Yeah, so let's see once what happens now with, uh, with Bob. So uh, Bob leaves the money in the bank. So at the end, uh, he starts off with $10. At the end of the first year, the easiest way to think about it is there's your $10. You multiply that by 1.1 plus 0.06. 10 times this gives you your money back. That's your principal. And 10 times 0.06, that gives you your 60 cents interest. And so you can write it like that, or you can write it as 10 times the quantity 1.06. And either way, you're going to end up with $10.60, okay? So that's at the end of the uh, first year. At the end of the second year, this is how much you have to work with. So that's how much is in the bank. Let's, let's write it like this instead. This is how much is in the bank right here. Agreed? That, that's how much is in the bank. And now you're going to multiply that by 1.06 at the end of the second year because there's your there's your or not that, that's the rich that's the amount there at the beginning of the year you multiply it by that and so you end up with 10 times 1.06 squared which gives you 11.24
See that? So you actually gained an extra four cents by leaving that money in the bank. At the end of the third year, you're going to have, there's your principal, so it's 10 times 1.06 squared, and now you multiply that by 1.06 again, which is going to be 10 times 1.06 cubed, and so uh, that's going to give you 1191. So this was 4 cents more, now you're up to 11 cents more. That's at the end of the uh, third year. At the end of the fourth year, you can see the progression here. It's going to be 10 times 1.06 to the fourth power, and that gives you uh, 1262. Okay, so you have almost a quarter more. At the end of the fifth year, you're going to have 10 times 1.06 to the fifth power, which is equal to uh, 11, or I'm sorry, 1338. Okay, so now you're, you're, you're 38 cents more than you were here, okay? Uh, not, not much, but here's what's happening between these two graphs. The one graph is going to be just 10 plus 0 0.06 over and over and over again, so it's just going to be growing linearly like this. The other one starts off at 10 as well, and it's going to be exponentially increasing. So instead of being a line, it's growing like this. And so it's gonna, it's gonna keep getting farther and farther away as it just keeps moving up more and more. We're looking at it over these first five years, but it's gonna become more and more of a difference as time goes on. So the question is how much of a difference? There's linear growth, there's exponential growth. Here you just keep adding the same amount, see that? You keep adding the same amount each time. What are we adding? We're adding 60 cents each time. That's what we're adding. Here, we are multiplying by the same number each time. So here you add the same thing. That gives you linear growth. Here you go in from one step to another. You multiply by the same thing, and that the thing you're multiplying by is bigger than one. So just like the COVID thing, if you multiply by something that's bigger than one, what happens? It it's increases, okay? It increases. And so uh, what happens by the time you get down to uh, 200 years? Turns out, maybe you've calculated it yourself, it's easy enough to do, 10 times 1.06 to the 200th power is equal to 1, 1, 5, 1. Look at that. Instead of $130, it's much bigger. And in fact, I'm not done writing it yet. So over a million dollars, okay? Over a million dollars you get by uh, watching that exponential growth uh, grow up. So there's a great example to show the difference between linear growth and uh, exponential growth. And that's why you wanna have your money in the bank. That's why you wanna put your money, if, uh, if uh, this, is, this is my advice, is just someone who, who's been around the world, not, not necessarily as a mathematician, but uh, putting your money in, in something like, well, are you familiar with, um, with uh, what's his name, the Hathaway, uh, uh, Warren Buffett. He just says, put your money in index funds where you're not trying to, trying to beat other people or trying to guess what's happening to the stock market. You're just gonna assume that the stock market is gonna grow over time, which it, historically it has. And if you just put it in there and keep, keep contributing, and uh, that's probably, the, he, he, that's what he claims is the best thing to do with your money and you can just watch it grow. And, and if you talk to people who, uh, there are a lot of uh, people who've said if you start saving money at age 25 versus start saving a whole lot more at age 45, you're much, much better off just saving a smaller amount but starting it earlier on and just watching, letting exponential growth help you out. So uh, that's, that's why we call this a liberal arts education because you learn about mathematics, you learn truths of, of the real world that come that you, you wouldn't learn this on the street, you wouldn't learn this just by thinking about it. You, uh, you learn it in a math class and then you can apply it and you can apply it to a better life, okay? You can apply it to a better life if you can both save money or the opposite of this is if you have a lot of debts, then, then your credit card bills are eating this stuff up.
So you want to try to keep away from the debts, at least high debts with high interest rate, and uh, try to start saving money as soon as you can. Okay, there you go. You don't have 200 years to do it, but uh, you have a lifetime. Okay, very good. That's the end of exponential growth.